The first item of business today is a statement by Rosanna Cunningham on a deposit return scheme for Scotland. Uh, before I move on to that, uh, can I say that it appears that some significant details of the scheme have been reported in the press before today's announcement. And I would refer to the good practice guidance and announcements by the Scottish Government about major policy announcements coming in the first instance always to the Parliament. And I would urge the Government to have regard to that guidance. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Rosanna Cunningham for 10 minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I say that uh, um, the leak is disappointing because I feel it somewhat steals my own thunder. Uh, it's not something that the Government would wish to have seen, um, and I am absolutely unclear as to how uh, that happened. Um, we are proud to be leading the way across the UK with our plans for a deposit return scheme for single-use drinks containers. Last summer's extensive consultation reinforced the view that an appropriately targeted DRS would help to improve the environment and change people's attitudes to recycling and littering. The scheme is central to our ambition to build a more circular economy where materials are kept in high value use for as long as possible. As the Chamber will be aware, we have embraced the recent report from the Committee on Climate Change and have acted with amendments to our bill. Interventions such as DRS will be central to our efforts to tackle climate change. The Scottish Government has been working closely with Zero Waste Scotland, SEPA and others to build on the outputs of the DRS consultation. We have engaged with a wide range of stakeholders to ensure that we learn the lessons of successful schemes. At the same time, we've been keen to avoid simply lifting and laying a model from elsewhere. We're clear that we need a DRS that properly reflects the needs of Scotland. I'm pleased to be able to share the outputs of that activity and to outline the shape of the ambitious scheme which we will deliver. Further detail on today's proposals will be available in supporting documents which will be published after this statement. The recent consultation signalled strong support for a DRS covering a wide range of materials, and so I intend to implement a system covering metal cans, PET, the most common form of plastic drinks containers, and glass. I've looked carefully at the arguments for and against glass. After a detailed analysis of how costs match up with benefits, including increased recycling rates, reductions in carbon emissions, and reductions in glass litter, my conclusion is that the inclusion of glass is justified. There's also strong public support for including glass, as shown by the Marine Conservation Society's recent polling in which 85% of participants indicated support for its inclusion. I know that some producers, retailers and the glass industry have concerns about its inclusion. I want to make it clear today that I am committed to working with them to implement the scheme in a way which addresses those concerns. However, if we are to include glass, it must be done from the outset. The infrastructure requirements for this material mean it would be hugely complex and expensive to add it later. I have chosen at this stage not to include HDPE plastic within the scope of the scheme. HDPE is primarily used for packaging fresh milk and there are significant concerns, for example, about contamination of other materials and odour. Unlike glass, it would be possible to include this material in DRS at a later stage if these concerns can be overcome. DRS needs to be as convenient as possible for the public. People must be able to easily access return points. It would not be acceptable for certain groups, for example, those living in our more rural and remote communities or those on low incomes to be penalised because they cannot return containers. And it's with this in mind that I intend to implement a return to retail model, whereby all businesses who sell drinks will be required to accept returns. This change will be visible to us all, including here in Parliament, in the Scottish Government, and in workplaces across the country, reinforcing the fact that we all have a role to play in helping our environment. We recognise 
that consideration must be given to the operation of DRS in smaller retail settings. Retailers will be given flexibility in how they enable returns through different sizes of reverse vending machines or manual over-the-counter take-back arrangements. We will explore with retailers how the financing of reverse vending machines can be supported and are committed to trialing different return storage and collection solutions in preparation for the scheme's rollout. I have carefully considered the calls by some to introduce automatic exemptions for retailers below a certain size, and I have significant reservations about doing so. Modeling shows that even a modest level of automatic exemption would quickly hinder the scheme's accessibility. An exemption for retailers with a floor space of up to 280 meters square, as has been proposed by some, would result in only 17% of retailers accepting returns. I do not believe this would be workable. Of course, there will be occasions where there are numerous retailers operating very close together. Where this is the case, we should build in the flexibility to accommodate exemptions. I also believe there should be the flexibility to supplement the role of retailers through the operation of additional return points. This could help to drive additional footfall for community initiatives and could add particular value in our more rural and remote communities which are less well served by shops. By taking this approach, we will maximise opportunities for the public to reclaim their deposits. I've listened carefully to the hospitality industry regarding how DRS should operate on premises such as pubs and restaurants where drinks are sold for consumption on site. I can confirm that in such cases, the premises will pay the deposit, but will have the choice as to whether to pass it on to the consumer. Presiding officer, international evidence suggests that the value of the deposit within a DRS is key to participation. The consultation indicated strong support for a deposit of 15p or more, and our analysis suggests that a deposit of around this level would support a strong return rate. Evidence from international models also indicates the ease of consumer understanding and proofing against inflation are important factors. I'm therefore proposing a deposit level of 20p. With up to 1.7 billion containers and many millions of pounds passing through our DRS, it will be important for businesses and the public to have confidence in its operation. We've looked at examples of effective schemes elsewhere. It is clear that privately operated systems can often deliver the right performance outcomes. In practice, this involves producers and retailers establishing a not-for-profit company for the specific purpose of running the scheme. And I favor such a model. DRS is a form of producer responsibility, and so intuitively, it makes sense that industry shoulders the responsibility for its operation. I believe that with the proper regulation, this will work well for Scotland. In line with other schemes, I see no reason why we cannot recycle 90% or more of our drinks containers through DRS. This is far in excess of current recycling rates, and I intend to reflect this aspiration in the regulations which will establish the scheme. Clearly, this will mean fewer containers being collected through curbside collections. We will work with local government to ensure DRS complements their collections, which will still have a critical role to play. Those collections will in future be supported through reformed packaging producer responsibility arrangements, which are currently being consulted on across the UK. The DRS regulations will be subject to super affirmative procedure. There will be ample opportunity to review and comment on our proposals before the secondary legislation is laid and during its passage through Parliament. I would encourage everyone to take that opportunity and continue the high levels of engagement that have benefited us to date. It is my intention to commence the super affirmative procedure this summer. There is clearly much to do to successfully translate the scheme design into a fully operational service. The contribution of industry will be central to its success. We have set up an implementation advisory group to work with those sectors with a direct stake in the scheme's operation. Members include the British Soft Drinks Association, Scottish Retail Consortium, the Scottish Beer and Pub Association, and a number of others. And that group will meet regularly to discuss implementation. I acknowledge that our plans are ambitious. Whilst I make no apology for this, I also do not underestimate the scale of the task. I look forward to working with partners 
to plan next steps. My overall aim is to deliver the scheme in the current parliamentary term. I remain very open to working with the other UK administrations which are currently consulting on DRS. However, this must be on the basis that their ambition matches our own. Our climate change commitments mean it is simply not an option for us to wait in the hope that others will follow the example we are now setting. But that said, I'm optimistic that the bold approach we're taking here in Scotland will provide a blueprint for future action across the UK. Presiding officer, today's announcement marks an important milestone for DRS and our wider circular economy ambitions. I look forward to working with parliamentarians across the chamber as we progress this work in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, that concludes the Minister's statement and we'll now move, sorry, the Cabinet Secretary's statement and we'll now move on to questions. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for that. We have a load of questions, so um, if people are succinct in questions and answers, I think we can get through them all. And I call Morris Golden. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'd like to refer members to my register of interest as well as thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement. Uh, a deposit return scheme can be a valuable tool in increasing recycling rates, but is commonly used in advance of curbside recycling infrastructure rollout. Nevertheless, I recognise that the SNP government have been working on the scheme for over a decade, and, and so I ex expect the smoothest possible rollout. Our expectations of the scheme would be as follows. A plastic recycling plant and DRS vending machines to be built here in Scotland, local authorities to be compensated on current and future revenue streams, as well as local authorities receiving technical support regarding any rerouting of uh, uh, collections, an incentive scheme to be rolled out to allow smaller businesses to uh, a mechanism to attract more customers and exemptions for smallest businesses, perhaps only with respect to glass. A procurement framework to be set up to allow businesses to buy vending machines at a competitive price, health and safety training for glass focused on smaller businesses, and a full behaviour change analysis engagement of the scheme as part of monitoring and evaluation. The Cabinet Secretary may wish to reflect on these points, but can Parliament be informed how much extra the inclusion of glass has added to the total cost of the scheme? Rosanna Cunningham. Um, well, the, 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 Maurice Golden has raised quite a lot of issues there and, and he will be um, uh, happy to know that the, the document which will be available to him at the end of this statement, which couldn't be published before because it would have given away uh, the, the scheme design, is a 150-page full business case, um, a stage one business case. And I feel that that is likely to have um, the level of detail that will have even Morris Golden's heart beating strongly. Um, I know that he, he, I know that he is, uh, he is somebody who is very keen <laughs> uh, on seeing that detail. Um, we have uh, obviously considered a number of the issues that the, uh, the member raises. I mean, these are key issues and I refer to some of them in my statement. Um, and one of the reasons what we've got the implementation advisory group is to continue to have that conversation. Um, and there will be another uh, business case, uh, case stage two, which will be published a little later in the process. So all of the things that the member is raising here uh, will be considerations that uh, 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 will be taken on board. And that includes glass and the issues around glass, because um, as the member may have, when I spoke in my statement, may have realised that glass was a slightly more um, uh, arguable case. Uh, I think people would have expected the plastic and aluminium. Glass was a little bit more... Uh, had to think a bit more about that one. Um, uh, on balance, we decided it was a better thing to do at this point because you can't retrofit it in. Um, and that, fundamentally, was going to be the major problem. But I hope to be able to engage with Maurice Golden on a lot of the detail that I know he is interested in. Claudia Beamish. Thank you, presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement. And Scottish Labour welcomes this robust um, uh, DRS model and recognises the campaigns by the Marine Conservation Society and Have You Got Bottle, I wish to declare that I visited Norway with that group last summer. I agree ambition must not be held up by the UK government, but compatibility with the UK will be important for businesses and the public. What contact has the Cabinet Secretary had with UK counterparts to ensure this necessary synergy? And having seen a collection station in Oslo, I asked the Cabinet Secretary both what actions can be taken by the Scottish Government to ensure that such stations are ready to receive the range of materials 
and what support has been given to new opportunities for remanufacturing, which is so important for our circular economy and for our climate change targets. Rosanna Cunningham. Well, those latter points are actually um, important, and I think they pick up on some of the things that Maurice Golden was referring uh, to as well. I mean, one of the things, and one of the reasons why we want uh, the industry to be uh, in the, the, the driving seat of running this is because they themselves, from a very early point, will see uh, the need and the advantage for a lot of this. I think it is the case that in Scotland we haven't grown some of the recycling opportunities that there might have been up until now. This will provide the volume uh, of materials to make that really happen. And that's one of the things that we will be continuing uh, to talk about, um, and I will expect the committee as well to be interested in that. Um, the member raised the question of uh, the relationship with the rest of the UK. Um, she may be reassured that uh, I have already been involved in two different meetings with my counterpart south of the border, uh, border to raise coffee uh, to discuss some of the issues around deposit return. They are well aware that we were a couple of years ahead of them in terms of what we were doing. Um, and I would hope that by taking the position that we've taken today, um, that Michael Gove and Therese Coffey will consider that they may be able to use some of the work and some of the experience, and indeed the business case that we are publishing, to help drive faster uh, what they're intending to do. I have 12 people who wish to ask questions, so I'd reiterate that um, being succinct would be useful. Gillian Martin, followed by John Scott. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I note the Cabinet Secretary's comments around the return to retail model. Um, I'd like to ask uh, how small retailers will be supported to play their part in delivering the scheme, but put particular emphasis on my question on rural villages and how rural people can have access to DRS machines. Rosanna Cunningham. Well, the intention is for DRS to be cost neutral for retailers who will be reimbursed through a per container handling fee, making participation for them as easy as possible. And we also intend to explore directly with retailers how the financing of reverse vending machines can be supported. And that may be one of the things I missed um, from uh, Maurice Golden's list of points. Um, while some retailers will choose to operate a reverse vending machine, uh, vending machine we do recognise that that won't always be practical, and I think the member is probably referring to that. The scheme will therefore also allow for manual over-the-counter take-back, where that suits retailers. And finally, our decision not to include automatic exemptions for retailers will help us to ensure maximum coverage in remote and rural communities across the country. And that is a really important part of this. The vast majority of people have got to be able to have direct access to the ability to get that deposit back. Otherwise, it will not work. John Scott, followed by Alex Rowley. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that this scheme will be compatible with any future scheme developed in the rest of the United Kingdom? And will any additional recycling plant and infrastructure required be built in Scotland, preferably Ayrshire? <laughs> Rosanna Cunningham. Well, you know, uh, John Scott is an old friend of mine, but he somewhat overstates my abilities to be able to see into that crystal ball. What, I, what I'm saying today is we are, are pressing ahead with this with a very great deal of detail. I know that the UK government is seriously considering a deposit return scheme potentially to roll out through England and Wales. I cannot say what decisions they will come to when it comes to making their decisions. But by the time they are in the position, presumably, of making that decision, we will be well down the road to having one up and running. And I would hope that they will then have regard to what we've got in place. And I suspect that everybody, from producers and retailers and all the rest of it, are likely to pressure them to reintroduce, or, or to introduce there the same system as here. Alex Rowley, followed by Angus MacDonald. Yeah, I would also want to welcome the announcement, presiding officer. In the most modern deposit return schemes, the operator provides an app as an option for retailers so that they can request efficient collections and another app as an option for the public so they can reclaim their money directly or donate their money to charity. Will the Scottish deposit system include options of this sort looking at technology? Rosanna Cunningham. I think that would be one of the uh, uh, issues that would be discussed by the Implementation Advisory Group. I think it's a very good idea. We see apps being used now across the board for all sorts of things like paying parking and, uh, and all the rest of it. And I see absolutely no reason why we can't use modern technology in that way. Uh, and I will ensure that the advisory group, uh, which meets 
later this month uh, has that in front of them as a possible uh, um, add, addition to what they might be thinking about. Angus MacDonald, followed by Mark Ruskell. Thanks, President Officer. I too should refer members to my register of interests. At the invitation of Have You Got the Bottle, I joined a cross-party visit to Oslo to see the Norwegian system in operation. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of my strong support for DRS since first seeing it in operation in Norway in the mid-80s and my keen interest in seeing DRS rolled out in Scotland, so I'm delighted by today's announcement. The Cabinet Secretary, uh, however, said in her statement that she's aware of concerns by some retailers and producers, as well as the glass industry itself, regarding the inclusion of glass bottles in the scheme. Can she give those with concerns and this chamber an assurance that Zero Waste Scotland will do everything it can to engage with and assist any retailers or producers who continue to have concerns over the period that the scheme is being implemented? Rosanna Cunningham. But we are absolutely committed to continuing the engagement that we've already had with retailers as part of the development of the scheme. And as part of this, uh, we do intend to work with them to test different return storage and collection arrangements in the coming months. Um, the critical role of retailers is also reflected in the membership of the Implementation Advisory Group, which I've already uh, spoken about, which includes representatives from the Scottish Retail Consortium, Scottish Grocers Federation, Federation of Small Businesses and National Federation of Retail News Agents. So it's my intention to bring forward secondary legislation to establish the scheme later this year. Uh, that will provide another important opportunity for retailers to engage with Parliament on our plans for DRS. Mark Ruskell, followed by Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, and can I also uh, refer members to my register of interest and the very successful uh, study visit that a number of us undertook to Oslo last year. And can I add the, uh, on behalf of the Scottish Greens that we warmly welcome this wide-ranging deposit return scheme that really does take the lead within the UK. Um, the Cabinet Secretary also visited Oslo in preparation for this scheme last year, where hotels, restaurants and the catering trade who collect empties on behalf of the system are paid the same handling fee as retailers who do the same work. So can the Minister confirm that that will be the case for Scotland's hospitality trade as well? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, uh, so far as I understand it, we, uh, the hospitality trade uh, are not going to be required to um, deal with the deposit at the, the, the deposit return system with the customer. They will be the, uh, the customer in that sense. Um, whether or not we uh, then think about them in terms of the handling uh, the handling fee. Um, can I undertake to get back to Mark Ruskell on that level of detail because I'm not entirely certain uh, that uh, uh, I would understand that that was the case, but I wouldn't want to say it isn't either and mislead him. Gordon MacDonald, followed by Liam MacArthur. Can I also refer members to my register of interest as I'm the convener of the CPG on independent convenience stores? The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that three members of the Scottish Grocers Federation have been trialling a reverse vending machine, including the Ox Gang's premier store in my constituency. Over 36,000 plastic bottles and aluminium cans have been collected in two months, with 40% of people donating the deposit to a local charity. However, these machines with a smaller footprint cannot accommodate the collection of glass. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify how she expects the convenience store sector that in most cases had limited floor space, how they are expected to accommodate the storage of glass. Rosanna Cunningham. Well, of course, that was one of the issues we had to think about uh, in terms of whether we included glass or not. And it's precisely those smaller uh, uh, machines that don't take back glass that would, if that was what was rolled out in a scheme, make it almost impossible in future years to add glass in. So, yes, indeed. Uh, um, that trial showed you that once you were set up on that basis, glass wasn't really going to be a, a, a possibility in the future. Retailers will have the flexibility to accept returns either through machines or manually over the counter if that better meets their needs. And we are committed, as I indicated earlier, to testing different return storage and collection arrangements in preparation for the scheme's implementation. Where businesses choose to use RVMs, they will have flexibility over the type of machines they operate, subject to some basic technical criteria being met. There is not going to be a mandated RVM model. Liam MacArthur, followed by Alistair Allen. 
Thank you. Can I too uh, declare an interest as a member of that cross-party delegation uh, to uh, Oslo and uh, as the, a member of the party that has committed to DRS since I think 2012, can I warmly welcome the commitment and indeed much of the content of the Cabinet Secretary's statement. Can she confirm perhaps that uh, the, these proposals will be island-proofed so that the accessibility and affordability to residents and businesses in island communities is properly taken account of? And given the strong evidence from Norway about the environmental and indeed economic benefits of excluding glass uh, allowing other less environmentally impactful uh, materials to be used. Can she also confirm that she's open to uh, further that, debate? I think that's enough, Mr. MacArthur. That's glass. two questions already. Thank you. I'll catch up with Liam Rosanna MacArthur. Cunningham. I'll catch up with Liam MacArthur uh, separately on some of the, uh, the wider issues. I can absolutely reassure him that uh, the comments that I'm making about remote and rural premises are basically also to include island premises. And I know that there is a very real issue. It has been raised by my colleague Mike Russell uh, as well in respect of uh, GIA. Um, and I want to reassure Liam MacArthur that that will absolutely be something that we, uh, uh, we take on board. There are different ways to manage this. Norway too has uh, remote and rural areas and islands. Um, and there are plenty of examples internationally uh, of this uh, particular issue uh, being resolved and I don't have any concerns that that will not happen also in Scotland. Um, there are some details I can share with him but I wouldn't have time. Now the questions have been really getting very long again and I have five left. We're not going to get everybody in. I'll do my best. Uh, Alison Allen followed by Finlay Carson. On the issue uh, of uh, rural and remote and island communities, uh, can I ask specifically whether uh, one way around some of the problems that a number of members have raised would be if there were com communal return points set up at other institutions than shops, perhaps schools and community centres? Rosanna Cunningham. It's exactly something we envisage as a possibility. The scheme design does allow for community-led return points to be established. Um, these could be provided by, for example, a local authority or even a third sector provider and will encourage the public to make best use of local services across the country. Finlay Carson, followed by James Kelly. I declare an interest uh, as part of the cross-party group that visited Norway's to see the DRS scheme. Um, the proposed flat rate of 20 pence deposit does not take into consideration the cost of recovery or how sustainable each material is. Can you set out how this scheme will encourage producers to switch to a more recyclable and lower carbon product uh, packaging? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, I think the members should be aware that there are actually a number of initiatives going on and his own government at Westminster has already introduced a, a, a kind of plastics tax uh, which is coming at it from the direction of the, of the producer as well. So um, th there are a number of things happening in the, uh, in the UK as a whole as well as what we're announcing today in Scotland that do deal with some of the issues that, uh, uh, that he has just raised there. Um, uh, and I know that uh, uh, if he was to um, question... Michael Gove, he would get um, a fairly robust answer on the plastics tax that has been, uh, uh, that has been uh, introduced at a UK-wide level. Um, I, I'm happy to talk to uh, Finlay Carson uh, more about the 20 pence. From our perspective, we were thinking about the impact on the customer, um, the, 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 the need for it to be a straightforward, simple, understandable deposit, but that they would still want to reclaim. James Kelly, followed by Kenneth Gibson. I recently visited the family shopper in Blantyre with the proceeds from the reverse vending machine, some of which were returned to the community. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how the scheme she's outlined today can incentivise community involvement? Rosanna Cunningham. There is nothing in our scheme design that would make that uh, impossible. Uh, all of that is, I expect, th uh, one of the, the, amongst the things that people will want to look at. Uh, I know that some, and I, I'm not quite sure who it was that uh, talked about that, happening, I think it was Alec Rowley talked about a similar kind of thing happening elsewhere. Um, the, the, those who are administrating the schemes will, uh, uh, will perhaps understand that, but that will be a matter entirely for each customer to make that decision. Um, uh, and I would anticipate that in some cases that will continue to happen, in other cases not. Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, and can I, uh, sorry, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, and can I declare I've never been to Oslo um, can the Cabinet Secretary provide assurance that return accessibility, for example, for those without cars, will be a key consideration in relation to implementation so that people can make returns with ease? Rosanna Cunningham. Thank you, and I'm now wondering whether or not I should have also declared that I've been to <laughs> Norway to look at the system. 
Uh, can I just say, in our, all, all our defence, those of us who've been there, it is an astonishing thing to, to look at and understand. And it clears away a lot of the concerns that people have about deposit return systems. In response to Kenny uh, Gibson, we are committed to working with retailers to test different return storage and collection arrangements in the coming months. In addition, we will look at different options for retailers to access support to acquire reverse vending machines where they choose to operate automated returns. And these considerations will be taken forward by the implementation advisory group that I've already mentioned. That concludes questions on the Minister's statement. Apologies to Maurice Corey for not being able to call him.